Today, we're doing a new talk. And the talk I want to do is a um, follow-up, if you like, a sequel to a very popular talk I did four years ago. The topic of today's talk is Currency Wars 2. The ship is sinking. Now, for those of you who know, I did a talk four years ago called The Currency Wars, and it was about national currencies fighting each other in a zero-sum game and the role that Bitcoin plays in that environment. I made a prediction that they would blame us for the mess of traditional currencies, and today we're going to look at how things have changed since then and how things have not changed. First of all, the direction hasn't changed. But a lot of things have changed. A lot of new developments have happened, as well as things have gotten a lot worse. We're going to talk about all of the noise that is being generated around the topic of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and blockchains and central bank digital currencies and corporate currencies. We're going to talk about how those new elements play into the overall picture. And we're also going to talk about what you need to know and what you need to do to live in this new environment. The ship is sinking. Now, let's take that metaphor a bit further. You've probably heard me say in the past that Bitcoin acts like a lifeboat and that national currencies are a bit like a cruise ship. Lots of volume, not very volatile, very stable, except for the fact that they're sinking. And we'll take that metaphor a bit further today and talk about how the currency wars environment has developed and how this concept of a sinking ship and a lifeboat exit play into our new environment. All right, so let's start with all of the noise. When I gave my talk four years ago about currency wars, very, very few people had even heard of Bitcoin. That was two bubbles before. Um, and the mainstream conversation about Bitcoin was still, still very much one of weirdness. People didn't know what to make of this thing and couldn't quite figure out why everyone was interested. Of course, now a lot more people have heard of Bitcoin. A lot more people have heard of cryptocurrencies and yet people don't know what to do with this thing. They don't know what it means. They think it's kind of weird and they don't understand why anyone would be interested in it. But unlike before, when we were being ignored, now there is a ton of noise coming from government. Think of yourself as being on one of these big ships of national currency and you're noticing a lot of people congregating around the lifeboats. In fact, there are some lines forming, some people are shouting, and suddenly over the megaphone comes the announcement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain central banker speaking. Please return to your cabins. The ship is not sinking. Please do not panic. We have everything under control. This ship has been sailing for years without any problems whatsoever. The ship is not sinking. Rumors from the lower decks of rising water are just that. Things seem pretty dry up here. After all, a 2% angle of the decks is not only normal, it's necessary for growth and forward movement. Shipbuilders, who are experts in this space, have told us that in order for a ship to move forward, its deck must be inclined at 2%. That is perfectly normal, and sometimes the angle increases even further. Ironically, you're hearing the same kinds of messages from other ships too, because they're all sinking. The captain of the Indian ship is saying, hey, a 25% deck angle is perfectly normal. 
the captain of the Venezuelan ship is saying a 98% angle is perfectly normal. But the noise isn't mostly about the sinking ship. In fact, what they really want you to focus on is not the sinking ship. Instead, they want all of your attention focused on how deficient the lifeboats are. Listen. This is your captain speaking. Lifeboats are dangerous. Only pirates use small boats. Lifeboats are unstable, untested, and we don't think they're backed by anything. Just because they're currently being held up by speculative cranes doesn't mean they'll float if you drop them into the water. This ship is by far the most stable thing you can be on. Not only that, of course, but lifeboats have no crew. They have no captain. It's anarchy in the lifeboats. Why would you put your lives in the hands of complete strangers cast adrift on the sea? Why not stay right here? Even if you think we're sinking, it seems perfectly dry. And that's the noise. And the noise is getting louder and louder and louder. They're trying everything possible to discourage people from heading for the exits, to discourage people from jumping in the lifeboats, and most importantly, to discourage people from talking about the plain and simple fact that all of the fiat currency ships are sinking. If they want to distract you about this ship, they point at the other ship and they say, look, our decks are higher than theirs. That means we're winning. But that doesn't really matter if you're in one of the lower decks that's underwater, because you're not winning no matter what is happening above you. The noise is intended to distract you from these simple facts, and yet more and more people are heading for the lifeboats. Now, here's the thing. A lot of the people who are heading for the lifeboats have no idea what's going on. Some of them think there is a party. Some of them think this is just a drill. Some of them think this is a fun activity planned by the captain. It doesn't matter. They're at least heading in the right direction, and they're at least figuring out where the lifeboats are and how to find them. Even if they're not on board yet, even if they have no idea why they're heading in that direction, even if they haven't yet admitted or accepted or believed that the, sh that the ship is sinking, at least they can see that there's some kind of weird activity happening on the lifeboats. I hope you're enjoying this metaphor, and of course, I'm going to stretch it to the point where it becomes completely ridiculous. But the point is very serious, because some of the rhetoric that is coming from the megaphones in the ship will start to make you feel like you're doing something wrong. And that, of course, is intentional. Listen. The captain says, we're all in this together. Join a bailout bucket line. Pick up a bucket and help us bail out. Do your duty. Stick with us. Those who head for the lifeboats are not helping us bail out. Those who head for the lifeboats are the traitors. They're pirates, most likely. Criminals. Your patriotic duty your nationalistic duty, your environmental and moral duty, is not to support those dirty, unreliable, polluting, uncrewed, uncaptained vessels of death that other people are jumping into. It's to stay here on this beautiful cruise ship that has sailed for decades without any mishaps. They say, we're in this together. And that's the biggest lie of all. Because, of course, we were never in this together. The people who are in the upper decks of this ship have never seen a drop of water on their floors. Meanwhile, down in the third-class deck, 
The water has been above their waistline for decades, and some of them are beginning to go over their necks. We have never been in this together because you keep seeing some of the first class passengers jumping onto helicopters so they can go to another ship. They're not tied to this one. They can go to another one that seems to be doing better where they can sit down and have a dinner in the Davos dinner room, the grand ballroom of that ship or the G20 or G7 room, where they're having the real conversation about the fact that all of the ships are sinking, but some of them are sinking less fast. They have the means to arbitrage. They have the means to choose currencies and jurisdictions. They're not tied to this ship. The captain will not go down with the ship. One company, whose name is infamous, has already told us the truth about we're in this together. Mossack Fonseca, the Panama Papers company, showed us just a sliver of what happens in international tax havens. And we found out that while people in the Indian government and the um, Venezuelan government and every other dictatorship and bad government and um, weird authoritarian place and also the leaders of all of the rich places around the world are all stashing money abroad. Do you think that an Indian bureaucrat who is currently writing legislation to ban cryptocurrencies doesn't have a foreign currency account stashed somewhere just in case what they expect will happen to the rupee happens to the rupee, we're in this together. Not only are we not in this together, but you start noticing some weird problems. Um, they gave you a bucket and they put you in line to bail out, but for some reason you're on the second deck and what you're doing is you're picking up water from the second deck and dumping it down below to the third deck which is already inundated and getting worse. And this does not seem to be a very productive exercise. Moving water from one end of the ship to the other does not prevent it from sinking. But, as I said before, a 2% deck angle is normal and necessary for the functioning of the ship. The listing that you are experiencing is gradual and not to be worried about. And after all, why would you jump into one of these flimsy little lifeboats that bounce up and down on the waves? The volatility will surely give you seasickness. And if you get into trouble, there is no captain to help you with a carefully laid out plan of national cohesion, currency absolutism, and a bailout line that keeps the first deck clean and dry. But here's the thing. That lifeboat isn't only an exit. What it is, is the ability for you to also, for the first time, arbitrage between currencies. You can even think of it as a tokenized derivative of inflation and corruption. You can short inflation and short corruption in your own country by putting some of your money in this derivative. It allows you for the first time to do what the rich, the powerful, the large corporations and the governments themselves have always been doing. Tell you that we're all in this together, but in the meantime, they have an exit plan. They have a stash. They're probably buying Bitcoin too. So, what happens next? As you're standing around and all of this noise is happening while they're telling you that you shouldn't be in the lifeboats, that you are a criminal, a pirate, you're not a patriot, you're not helping with the bailout. In fact, part of the reason the ship is sinking is because you are not in one of the lower decks using your flotation device to keep the ship upright. It's your fault we're sinking because you didn't stick around 
to hold us up with your own flotation device. You're being selfish, leaving at this moment of great national need. Hang on a second. Who's that standing by the lifeboat? Is that Elon Musk? Is that one of the richest people on Earth? Why is he wearing a life jacket? Now, you might think this is a great endorsement of lifeboat technology. But just today, Elon Musk said that Bitcoin's price is bullshit. <laughs> this isn't an endorsement of lifeboat technology. Elon Musk putting on a life jacket that represents 0.2% of his total wealth, or somebody else in that class putting on a life jacket, milling around the lifeboats, maybe having a couple of toes inside the lifeboat. This is hedging. This is a just-in-case move. This is, the helicopters are getting rather crowded, and I've noticed that many of the other ships we land on are also sinking. Maybe. We can't stay dry. When the economy that has worked only for these people is sinking, the people in the lower class decks are like, well, what's new? We've been wet down here for decades. It's not surprising that those people would head for the lifeboats. It's not surprising that those people would grow up being told a generational tale of earn pesos, save dollars. Hold rupees for shopping, buy gold for dowries. That generational tale is a tale of the emergency escape routes on this ship because you've been up to your ankles in water from the day you were born. What's surprising is that the first class passengers, for whom this ship has always been dry, for whom this economy has always worked, are beginning to think to themselves, things are getting moist up here. I'm noticing this deck is getting steeper by the day. And I don't think this bailout plan where we just move water around the inside of the ship is quite working. In fact, over the last year or so, we seem to have opened a massive hole that we have not got enough buckets to bail out from. So I'm still going to have a cabin on one of the other ships. I'm still going to have a couple of private helicopters ready to whisk me away. But I'm also going to study the location of the lifeboats, you know, just in case, just in case, because this ship might be sinking. The rich of the world beginning to approach the lifeboats is not an endorsement of lifeboat technology. What it is, is an absolute denunciation of the fiat stability fallacy. It is a condemnation of keeping all of your eggs in one basket. They are saying there might be some truth to the rumors of a sinking ship. And I'm going to have every opportunity to get off, including lifeboats. I don't trust them. They look flimsy. I keep hearing that they're not well built and they have no crew, but most importantly, when the ship sinks, anything that floats is by definition a lifeboat. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't even have to be good. Frankly, when the ship has sunk, you will try to crowd two people on a single door and discover that one of them has to drown because there's not enough room on the door for more than one person. But whether you think lifeboats are the best option or not, you should be studying your evacuation plan because even the people for whom this ship has always worked, who have always had an exit, are now eyeing your lifeboat and making a plan B. It seems like all of the noise isn't working anymore. 
It seems like repeated announcements over the megaphones that lifeboats cannot be trusted, that only pirates use lifeboats, that lifeboats cause far too much pollution. And if you were to replace all of the cruise ships in the world with lifeboats, that would cause global warming. It, it appears that the idea of uncrewed, uncaptained anarchy in the seas is not appealing. None of these ideas are actually working anymore. All of this noise is being ignored. More and more people are thinking, hey, those lifeboats are looking pretty good. The people there seem to be having fun. Some of them are doing really, really well and staying very, very dry. But even if they're not, I'm going to maybe take a chance. So now what? What can the captain do? What can the captain do to distract from this exit to the lifeboats? Emergency meeting, first officers, chief engineers, and captain in the bridge, please. All right, gentlemen and lady, it is time we have another plan. We have been announcing the insufficiency of lifeboats for years now, but as you can see, people are not returning to their cabins. So I have a new plan, Operation Cruise Ship Lifeboat. We are going to call this a central bank digital currency. The people have spoken. They want lifeboats. I shall make the announcement immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Due to increased interest in lifeboats, we are now starting a conversion program. As you can see around you, work units have started painting the cruise ship orange. I repeat, the cruise ship is now being painted orange. By painting the cruise ship orange, we achieve all of the benefits of lifeboats only with the stability of a crew and captain. Without the volatility of waves, because we only have a 2% angle of, sorry, 3% angle of deck, excuse me, 9% angle of deck, which is perfectly normal. This new lifeboat has fantastic features for security too, to prevent pirates from boarding us. Now that those terrible ships over there are sinking, and some of their passengers have escaped in pirate lifeboats, as you can see. We are welding all of the deck doors shut. We are making sure that no one can board this ship or leave. We're all in this together, now guaranteed by welded shut doors. So please do not congregate around the lifeboats. In fact, says the captain of the Indian ship. Lifeboats are banned because lifeboats encourage departures from our ship, reducing its flotation potential by removing our buoyancy devices. And they insult the project of the great orange cruise ship lifeboat that we have been painting furiously for weeks now. Central bank digital currencies are a thin layer of paint they manage to completely fail to understand the fundamental principle of the lifeboat, which is that even if some of them don't work or don't float, if you have 40 of them and you launch them, even if they don't have crews, even if they don't have a captain, even if they're not perfect, even if their engines don't work, they still float better than a sinking ship. And at least some people are going to survive on those. A centralized, large ship that's painted orange is not a lifeboat. There's a reason why every cruise ship doesn't just drag a second standby cruise ship painted orange behind it, just in case there's a problem so that everyone can simply switch ships. There's a reason why you have lots and lots and lots of little lifeboats. They're not as luxurious, they're not as well managed but they're decentralized and they have a greater chance of surviving. They're going to paint it orange and a lot of your fellow passengers are gonna go, there we go, look at this, 
We all have a lifeboat now, and it's spacious, and it has a swimming pool both on the top deck and most of the third deck in the bottom that's full of water. The ballroom is fantastic, and the food, it's so-and-so, but hey, at least there's a buffet that's for unlimited eating. And they will stay on that ship. In fact, some of your fellow passengers might even be persuaded to go on to the shiny Facebook catamaran of Libra or DM or whatever the hell they're calling it now. That one looks even more stable and less sinky. It's also painted orange, which tells you that, of course, it is a lifeboat. Pay no attention to the oars sticking out the side, the fact that you can hear a drum beat from below decks and the sound of whips. You are certainly not going to be the slaves in the bowels of that ship. You are not going to be the propulsion system of that ship. Those are just rumors. But don't forget, lifeboats are fundamentally unsafe and only used by pirates. So what happens with all of this noise? What do you do with all of this? Governments are getting desperate. Some of them are getting aggressive. Some of them are chopping up the lifeboats to use them for firewood to feed the boiler. They are trying to prohibit you from heading to the exits. Even worse, in many of the places where they're trying to ban Bitcoin, they also want to ban the promotion of cryptocurrency, even cryptocurrency education. It's not only illegal to get into the lifeboat, it's illegal to give out the evacuation procedure or even point at the lifeboat. Because what you're doing is you're encouraging the removal of essential flotation devices. And you're persuading people to leave the bailout line where Counting simply the volume of water that's being moved from the second deck to the third deck, we are surely winning against the deluge coming in the ship. What do you need to do? As an individual, what you can do is study the emergency evacuation procedures. Familiarize yourself with the exits from the currency war fiasco. Understand when and how you can exit your national currency. If you're not ready to exit yet, find out at least where the exits are and how quickly you can get out. Maybe start making a plan. How? Put on your life jacket. So you're still dry and it makes it difficult to maneuver. It makes you look silly. At the buffet line, everybody looks at you and goes, what's all of this orange stuff? What are you doing? Are you one of those weird conspiracy theorists who think that the ship is sinking? Poor guy. He does look kind of dry though. Get in line. Get ready. At the very least, make a plan for yourself. But also, stop debating lifeboat safety. When some idiot out there says, based on the number of lifeboats and passengers, the overall pollution from launching all of the lifeboats on all of the ships everywhere around the world simultaneously and trying to put seven and a half billion people on him will cause a big oil slick. Don't answer. That's not a good faith argument. When they tell you that only pirates use lifeboats, don't answer. When they give all of this propaganda about how the Bitcoin lifeboat is unsafe, don't answer. Stop answering this noise. Stop feeding the distraction. Stop listening. You make your plan. And, you know, let them keep going because Many of us can already see through the ruse. The whole point of this is to distract you from the very, very clear fact that all of the ships are sinking, and in the last year or so, they all started taking on 
a hundred times more water than before, and there is no way you're going to keep them afloat. Whether the lifeboat is great or not, we are about to reach a point where anything that floats becomes equivalent to a lifeboat. And sure, the lifeboat might not be as much fun as the top deck of this cruise ship, but most of you haven't been living there anyway, and even if you had, that part's going to be underwater too. And then, teach others. Teach others about the emergency evacuation procedure. Teach them about the exits. Teach them how to get into a lifeboat and how to put on a life jacket. Many of them won't listen. Many of them won't learn. Many of them will look around and see that the cruise ship is painted orange and say, eh, I guess we don't need it anymore. That's okay. And most importantly, more importantly than anything else, remove your consent. Stop dropping buckets of water into the lower decks in order to bail out the top decks. Not only are you not doing your patriotic duty and helping, not only are you not helping the people in the ship, not only are you not stopping the ship from sinking, you are actively endorsing the strategy of denial and bailouts. You are actively also inundating the people at the bottom and drowning them because you are participating in this charade. Walk away. Walk away from the bailouts, walk away from the buckets, and put all of your creative effort, all of your intelligence, all of your educational potential, and maybe even some of your money, but that's not the point, into lifeboats. And don't judge people who are building lifeboats differently than you. They still are your allies because, like you, they have already figured out that the ship is sinking, that all the ships are sinking. Thank you very much. After this brief message, we'll come back and do a little behind the scenes talk about this particular talk and the concept of the sinking ship and how I came up with it. Hi, I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. If you enjoyed that video, consider that it takes a lot of work to produce open and free content that can be shared with everyone around the world. This isn't sponsored by some company. It's not promoting a product or an altcoin or some kind of investment scheme. My goal is simply to help explain the technology of Bitcoin and open blockchains to as many people as possible in a neutral way that focuses really on the incredible possibilities that this technology brings us. If you'd like to support that mission, subscribe to my channel and go on patreon.com slash aantonop, where you can participate and help me build better content for more people. Thank you. All right, I hope you enjoyed that talk, and if you did, please do help support my educational message. Uh, you can do that by becoming a member here on YouTube or by joining me as a community builder on Patreon. And thank you to all of those who make it possible for me to do neutral, unbiased, ad-free, and free education about this so important topic. Now, you probably heard that this is an unscripted talk. Well, there is no script to this talk. It's mostly improvisation on the spot. I do have some notes, though. There were five main topics that I wanted to cover and the conclusions that went with those topics. And those were on these two index cards. That's the extent of it. That's how these talks are delivered. I've been playing with this idea now for four days. I thought about it four days ago and started working on a broad outline nailed down the main points I wanted to talk about and wrote them on these index cards. Um, and in order to be able to do that, I have to rely on my production crew, my staff, and all of the people who help me, the moderators in the chat, and everybody else who makes it possible for me to do quality educational videos and deliver to them 
deliver them to you um, every week uh, on various topics. Now, next Sunday, we have an open topic monthly live stream Q&A. I'd like to thank all 1,400 people who joined me for today's talk. Uh, we are going to be releasing this video immediately after, and you can watch it again if you want. Um, and I hope this is one of the talks that will make it into one of my upcoming books, the Internet of Money series books that are basically collections of talks like this. Happy birthday, Karen. And if you uh, enjoyed this talk, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified of upcoming events. In addition to the open topic monthly live stream Q&A that we have coming up next Sunday, um, where you can ask questions in our Slido, uh, Patreon and YouTube members get advanced access to that to ask their questions. And you can also vote up the questions you want to see answered. That happens once a month and it produces a ton of great questions and hopefully some good answers for me. Uh, not much uh, planning, lots of improvisation in that particular style. Coming up next after the monthly open topic live stream, we have some additional live stream Q and A's where we cover a number of other topics. If I remember correctly, in March, we have DeFi as one of the topics we're gonna talk about. So if that's of interest to you, again, subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, I think that's everything I had. Um, there are six new YouTube members right now. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you for joining. I hope you really enjoyed this uh, and I hope you will share it with others who need to hear this important message. As I said, one of the steps is once you've figured out the emergency exits, you need to help others by telling them about why this is important. And maybe this video is one of the videos you decide to share with those who need to hear this message. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on your Sunday, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.